Hello everybody, I'm back with another practice problem for the FA exam. In this one I solved the question already where I calculated my Reynolds number and this question is add on to that and I will pick up where I left off from that question. Okay? When I prepare that, I will put a link to that video so you can watch how to obtain the Reynolds number momentarily. But let's go ahead and read the question. I have a heat exchanger and I have a water at 90 degrees C and the mean velocity is given as 0.1 meter per second and the diameter of the pipe is 10 centimeters which is 0.1 meters and the length of the pipe is 10 meters and I was given the, the pipe is made out of cast iron okay my goal is to find the head loss and you can see the choices over here it's like pretty much looking at the order of magnitude right the very first thing that you will do these kind of questions is calculate the Reynolds number that's the very first one okay depending on the direction of the Reynolds number if this is laminar, then I will simply go ahead and insert 64 over Reynolds as my Darcy friction factor. Okay, and if it is not laminar, which means it's either turbulent or transitional for that matter, I will get myself a, a function that I need to look from this particular graph that you see. So there's a Reynolds number, and also it will be a function of over epsilon over d. Okay, so. Here is where it is handy to put a link to the previous video where I calculated the Reynolds number, but I also replicated over here. So if you remember the Reynolds number has two definitions like this rho v d over nu, this is the dynamic viscosity, or same thing I can do v d divided by kinematic viscosity. And in this particular question I'm looking at this 90 degree, right? And I find my kinematic viscosity and basically I just put it over here. The velocity is uh, given as 0.1 meter per second, right? I plug that right there. Diameter is 0.1. I plug it and I get myself the Reynolds number as right around 30,500. I don't have to be exact. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to read off of a chart. So. so now, what does this tell me? Am I going in this arrow or am I going in that arrow? Yeah, I'm going in this arrow. So I gave you a little bit more work to do in this particular problem. So then I have to find my epsilon so that I can find my epsilon over d. Now, looking at this, you can see, let me zoom in over here. So my question tell me that this is cast iron. And looking at this, and I'm using SI, this will be, unfortunately, I'm given as a range as opposed to a particular number that I'm given. But this is very common because in real life, depending on the age of the pipe, these roughnesses will change, okay? We'll talk about this and when we talk about the Manning coefficient as well. So you can see, let's write it 0.2 millimeter at the lower end and let's write 0.9 millimeter in the upper end. For, from your end, actually it is wise to just go out and get this as 0.5 ish, right? You know, 0.55, I'm aware of that, but it doesn't have to be that specific. So I can take 0.5 as my epsilon and find the value because I'm pretty much asking you the order of magnitude so it will be fine but I'm gonna try to make a point so my final you can see here that this is ranging four and a half times right but the final answer when I find it will be much more closer to each other okay the final head loss value so I, that's why I'm gonna pick both of them and do the analysis for lower end and I'm gonna do the analysis for the higher end and go from there 0 0.2 times 10 to the minus 3 right that is in meters and the diameter will be 10 centimeters, so that's going to be 0 0.1, right? That is on the lower end, and the upper end is going to be 0 0.9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0 0.1. Again, diameter is the same. So you can see in here, so my F will be determined by this, 30,500. And then at the lower end, I'm going to get 2 times 10 to the minus 3 as my epsilon over T, or I'm going to get 9 times 10 to the minus 3, so that I'm in that particular range I wasn't being specific okay so then I'm gonna go back to the Moody's chart and here's what it is and I directly copied this from page 200 of your reference manual and this is supplied to you so I'm pretty sure you will need to refer to this chart throughout your FE exam okay uh, but here is what it what is going on so the first thing I do when I look at this chart although it looks kind of scary is look at the x-axis right so you can see that this is Reynolds number this y is y axis is my goal to find this Darcy friction factor um, and the secondary y axis is the relative 
roughness. Okay, so it's not that bad. But the fanning friction factor, which chemical engineers use, is just one fourth of it. All right, you're going to read it, and then you can draw by, by four. And I said that if it is laminar 64 over Arrhenius, right? That is the plot of that, and it even says that laminar flow. And do you see why it ends at 2000? Because that's the limit for laminar and it actually says in critical zone, transition zone, so on and so forth, right? 0 0.02, so 2 times 10 to the minus 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah, that, this is it. So this line is on the lower end, let's go like that, and I said 0 0.09, so I'm not giving 0 0.09, do you see it? I I'm giving 0 0.08, I'm giving 0 0.10, right? 0 0.1, so I'm going to go right in the middle of those two and I not try to do a good job with this writing on this pad and yeah it looks workable so then I'm gonna find my Reynolds number the Reynolds number is 30,500 so this is 10,000 this is 20 this is 30 you see this is a log log graph FYI so then I'm gonna be slightly right to the next of it because I'm only so this is the lower end this is the upper end of what I'm dealing with so then if I go out and read this um, you can see this is uh, 0 0.028. I'm, I'm being approximate here. I don't have to be exactly, you know, 0 0.028 at the lower end. At the upper hand, well, let's be symmetric, 0 0.038. Do you see that? So I'm just reading off of here, and this is 0 0.028. And over here, I'm right below 0 0.038. Okay? So note, this F value was ranging four and a half times. Look what happens in here. Now, four and a half times because became, I don't know, less than one and a half times. It was four and a half times, now it's less than one and a half times. So the numbers get closer to each other. That was the point I'm trying to make, okay? Okay, so now I know my F value. So let me go ahead and write it. 0 0.028 at the lower end of the spectrum, 0 0.038 at the upper end of the spectrum. Then I have my last formulas I had to work with, HL, or the friction head loss, is what I call but the friction uh, F, L over D, V squared over 2G. Now, F, let's write both of them, 0, 0, 0, 0.038, 0 I'll analyze them separately. L will be equal to 10 meters. So it was 10 meters, the diameter, was 0 0.1 meters, 10 centimeters. Um, the velocity was 0 0.1 square divided by 2 times g. Let's call this g. Okay, let's see what happens here. 0 0.1, one of them cancels. 10 times 0 0.1 becomes 1. So that's gone. Okay, not too bad. So let's do this. So I got myself, I'm going to divide. So let's call this g10. I know it's 9.8. But again, I don't have to be exactly accurate. So I'm dividing this by 20. So these numbers by 20. If I divide this by 20, so I'm going to get 0 0.0, one more 0 because I'm dividing, and then half of it, 0 0.014. And then the upper end, I'm going to get 0 0.0019, half of it, right? So you can see this is what I have, depending on how I read it. So what's the unit of it? Length, meters, okay? If I go up over here, you can see this is the closest answer that I have. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it.